Hi, this tutorial is to explain a little bit about how things enter and leave a cell. Uh, remember, this is really simple version for 7th grade life science, and it gets a little more complicated as you get into biology in high school, AP biology, and then any biology classes in college. Uh, one of the simplest ways things get into a cell is through diffusion. And over here, uh, we've got a cell, and out here is the cell's uh, environment or the space around the cell. And each of these little circles is an atom. If we look at our key, uh, this atom right here is O2 or the oxygen we breathe in. So if we count these little oxygen molecules, since there's two of them, there's only three inside the cell and there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven outside of the cell. So outside the cell we have a high concentration and inside the cell we have a low concentration. And with diffusion, things just naturally move from a high concentration to a low concentration without any energy being used. There we go. So it went from a high concentration to a low. And once this evens out, diffusion slows down or stops, and if the concentration ever becomes higher inside the cell, then those oxygen molecules would move outside to even out the concentration, and that's diffusion. Here we have diffusion again. The difference is uh, now we have a carbon atom bonded to two oxygen atoms. So this little molecule up here is CO2. And a common misconception that students of science have early on is that diffusion moves one way or it moves things into a cell or out of a cell and that really doesn't matter. What matters is that it's moving from a high concentration to a low concentration and this time we have the high concentration inside the cell and a low concentration outside the cell. So the CO2 molecules want to move from the high to the low concentration or outside of the cell. And remember these are relatively small molecules so they can generally, for the most part, pass through the cell membrane. Osmosis is a little different than diffusion uh, simply because of the type of molecule it affects. If you look at this molecule here and go down to the key, you'll see there's one oxygen bonded to two hydrogen, or H2O, which is what we know as water. So these are water molecules, and with these water molecules, you can see that there's a high concentration outside of the cell, and there's a low concentration inside the cell. And basically, osmosis is the diffusion of water. Because water plays such a vital role in cells and in cellular processes, it gets a separate name than regular diffusion, so diffusion affects all sorts of other molecules if the molecule is water, and it's moving from a high concentration to low concentration, it's called osmosis. Another way things can move into or out of a cell is through active transport. And the word active is important in here because that implies that energy is needed. Uh, osmosis and diffusion are sometimes referred to in the category of passive transport. There's no energy needed. They just move from a high concentration to a low concentration. Now these molecules are a lot bigger. If we're to count these up, this would be C6H12O6, which is glucose. And in this case, we have a high concentration in the cell and a low concentration outside of the cell. But often your cell needs sugar. So what will happen here is this this molecule will move from a low concentration to a high concentration. And it's doing that through this protein that's embedded in the cell. And this protein can help move something through. It requires energy, and remember, energy in a cell is called ATP. So to move something through active transport or from low concentration to high concentration, it's generally moving through a transport protein in the cell membrane and it requires ATP.